Lord be with you. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you this morning to the divine service as we gather around God's holy word to receive the gifts of his very body and blood in the Holy Communion. A few announcements for this morning. Uh, please join us in the lounge in between services for some coffee and goodies and then head on to the gymnasium at 9.30 for a study entitled God's Word to Us, A Path of Discovery. Today we'll look at the book of Job. The new member class continues, Catechesis for Life, meets in the fellowship hall. And the children's Sunday school opening meets at 9.30 in the music room. The best way to follow along is to place your bulletin in the back of your hymnal. The panel serves as a guide. Simply go to the page indicated. That's it for announcements. Please stand. The bells will call us to worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Please kneel for confession and absolution. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As the called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday after Epiphany is from Isaiah chapter 62. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not be quiet, until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nation shall see your righteousness, and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will, go the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your, your land shall no more be termed desolate. You shall be called, my delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Now, there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of service, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish different spirits, 
to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit, who apportions to each one individually as he wills. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. On the third day, there was a wedding at Canaan, Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. When the master of the feast tasted the water now become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and when people have drunk freely, then the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. This, the first of his signs Jesus did at Cana in Galilee, and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord.
Our text for this morning's sermon is taken from the gospel lesson with special emphasis on the following words. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. This is our text. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus Christ, do whatever he tells you. That's right up there with, because I said so. Quite frankly, we don't like being told what to do. We don't like it when someone says, do your homework or do your job. We'd rather listen to our inner voice and do what we tell ourselves. But that's not what Mary does, even though as Jesus' mom, it's what we might expect. Mary doesn't say, do whatever I tell you, but she says, do whatever he tells you. She knows that Jesus is not just a good son, a special talent, or someone knowledgeable about how to get things done in any given circumstance. He's not just her son. He's the son of God. He's God himself in the flesh. Remember, she's pondered all of this. She knows who he is, and that's really what Epiphany is about, right? To make known or to bring to light who Jesus is. He's Lord. He's God. And what he says goes. Now, the servants did what Jesus told them, but what if they didn't do it? Or even worse, they told him that he had no right to tell them what to do. I mean, think about it. He was only a guest at this wedding. He wasn't in charge. He wasn't even in the wedding party, for heaven's sake. From their point of view, it couldn't have made any sense. In fact, what he said must have seemed like to them an exercise in futility. I mean, this is how it must have seemed to them. Think of it this way. Think of them saying, okay, we're going to fill these jars with water, draw some out, and take it to the master of the feast, and he's going to yell at us for bringing us water and not wine as he ordered. I mean, it didn't make any sense. Likewise, Jesus tells you things that from your point of view don't make any sense either, right? Think about it. He says you must be born again. And the way you're born again is through the water and word of holy baptism. The Apostle Paul puts it this way, baptism now saves you. And you look at that and you see the water and you say, really? Really? That's where you receive the forgiveness of sins? I see water there. Surely you can't mean it. I see something symbolic. It's water, okay, if you want to say it symbolizes, it washes away sin and that. No, no, but you're saying more than that? That it actually forgives sins? That it actually gives you a new life? That it's actually the means by which God gives you a whole new life? By the way, symbols don't do that. They just remind you of something else. What Jesus, the claim that Jesus makes about holy baptism is incredible. I mean, it's like thinking, oh yeah, he says bring this water and it's going to be wine. Really? Or how about this? He says about a little piece of bread, this is my body. He says about a little wine in the cup, this is my blood. Really? It makes no sense. And yet what he says goes. And he says this brings you the forgiveness of sins life, and salvation. What are some of the other things he says that don't make sense? Yeah, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Really? Then they're going to take advantage of me and hurt me. I'm not going to make it in life if I follow what you say. Do whatever he tells you. Really? And then he tells you that you need to repent. For the kingdom of heaven is near. That 
You suffer from concupiscence. That's your very, the heart of your being. You're, you're evil. Wow. We don't like to hear that. Really, that's what you say who we are? I mean, the world tells me if I believe in myself, I can do anything. I'm just glorious. I can, I'm, I, there's, there's nothing I can't do if I just look inside my heart and you say I'm evil? Really? Yeah. So instead of listening to what Jesus tells us, we listen to our inner voice, don't we? We all have one. We listen to that inner voice because we don't believe him. So instead of doing what he tells you, you do what you tell yourself. And what do you tell yourself? Just water, just bread, just wine. I'm not going to love my enemies. These people need to be destroyed. That's what we tell ourselves. You hurt me, I'll hurt you. I'm a good person. How dare you say I'm a bad person? No one else is going to tell me what to do. With our inner voice, we're always justifying ourselves, right? We don't recognize or we don't want to see the truth that in the end we really are poor, miserable sinners. But that's why Jesus came into the world. That's why Jesus does his thing at the wedding at Cana in Galilee. And right here and now through his word. I mean, think about it. At the wedding at Cana in Galilee, Jesus manifested his glory. He showed that he's God. But he did it from behind the scenes. Why? Because his hour had not yet come. He did it because it was in his nature to do it. It's what he's about. Just like from our nature, we just naturally sin. From his nature, he always does good. And his words always produce what they say. And his mom knew it. That's why when Jesus said, well, why are you involving me in this, that they have no wine? She knows who he is, so she just tells the servants, do whatever he tells you. She knows that Jesus is the Savior. She knows that he's the Christ, the one set apart to be our Emmanuel, God with us, to give us what we need both for this life and for the life to come. Do whatever he tells you. Think about this. It's exactly what Jesus did. He did what our Heavenly Father told him to do. Wow. He did every single commandment perfectly in thought, word, and deed. He did it all. I mean, think about that perfectly. He loved his enemies. He did good to those who hurt him. Amazing, isn't it? And he suffered and died for those very people for the forgiveness of their sins, that they would have life with God and one another, that they would be made right, as we heard last week when Jesus is baptized with our sin. Let it be so now, John, to fulfill all righteousness. He came to make things right with us by doing everything the Father told him to do. And he did it. Is it any wonder that the Father looks down and says, this is my son whom I love. With him, I'm well pleased. He's the perfect son. He does everything well. Jesus did all the Father told him. And quite frankly, that's made all the difference in the world. So what do we say now? We say, come Lord Jesus to this feast. Come Lord Jesus and be our guest here at this feast. Come Lord Jesus, be our guest and let these gifts of salvation, let these gifts with us be blessed. That's what we say. Because we, like those servants and Mary, are given to see what you cannot see. We see through our ears. His word enlightens us to see that there's more going on than meets the eye. It's no different than, for example, someone telling you that there are cell phone signals going on in here. You don't see them, but you know it's true. You're taught 
But that's what's going on. Well, the Lord of heaven and earth teaches you what's really going on here. The reality of that what he says, he does, including delivering the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation to each and every one of us. Remember how in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said, Thy will, not mine, be done. That's what he prayed. That what you say, I do. And the result was that on the third day, Jesus manifested his glory through the resurrection of the dead, through the resurrection, his resurrection. His hour had come. His glory was there for all to see in his death and resurrection. That's where we see the glory of God, that he loves his people. He loves you and me. He loves every single person on the face of this earth, past, present, and future, with everything he is and everything he has. He loves us to death, even death on the cross. That's the glory of God. He glories to give of himself to us. That's what he glories in. And the hour where that was completed was when he said it is finished and then he proved it with his resurrection before witnesses well what's he doing in this hour his hour has come and it comes whenever and wherever we gather in his name to hear his word he's here delivering the spoils of his victory the forgiveness of sins life and salvation you draw out of that water life and peace you draw out of the body, and, uh, the, the bread, his body, and out of the, the chalice, the blood of his life that conquers even death. He's here as the King of kings and Lord of lords, not to be served, but to serve and to give his life to many, to give his life to you. This is where we see the glory of God. There's not a God like that anywhere else in the world because there's only one God, and he's revealed to us in and through Jesus Christ. So today, do whatever he tells you. Do whatever he tells you means first and foremost, come. Come and receive his forgiveness. For this he has told you to do. To be baptized to hear his, I forgive you all your sins in response to your confession, to receive his body and his blood for the forgiveness of your sins and the strengthening of your faith, to come and receive his gifts. That's the highest form of worship of God. For what God wants most is not for you to give to him, but for you to receive what he has come to give to you. The life he wants to give you in his son. In receiving his gifts, we then live the life that has been given to us. We live the life of the spirit given to us. The spirit who, as Paul said, is working in and leading each of us as he wills. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit, right? Our Lord gave you his spirit in the water and word of holy baptism so that you can recognize, so that you can know that he's Lord. He changes water into wine. He overcomes sin and death and his death and resurrection. His will is to build up the body of Christ by being his blessing to others. So do whatever he tells you. Receive his gifts and then go on and live his life, his life at work within you. For on the third day, if you will, There will be a wedding, a wedding in heaven. Jesus will be there. His mom will be there. The disciples will be there too. But I got news for you. They're not going to run out of wine. For it is the wedding feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. And guess what? You're the bride. You're the guests of honor. For you, everything has been prepared and ready for a life to be lived in the glory of God together with him and one another throughout all eternity. For yes, as at Cana, the best is yet to come. 
it is to live in the light of the glory of God together with him and one another throughout all eternity. And the people say, Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and our lives in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, you manifest your glory in the sign of Cana. As you restored creation through the shedding of Christ's blood, pour out your grace and abundance. Give us joy and gladness in the revelation of your truth in the person of your Son. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of glory, preserve your Son's bride, the church. Make it her constant joy and delight to preach the good news of forgiveness and her Savior to poor sinners. We also thank you this day for the faithful work of Cindy Lindbergh, two-year-old child care teacher at Trinity. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of glory, you blessed the wedding at Cana with your presence and honored it with your first miracle. Strengthen and give gladness to all married couples and their families. Be present in our homes with your free and abundant forgiveness. Preserve us in the true faith from each generation to the next. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of glory, you rule this world by your power. Give to our civil servants respect and recognition of your creation and its nature. When they use authority given them from above, let it be accord with your good design for our world and not the corruption of sin, which they are to rebuke for the good of citizens. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of glory, we bring before you the sick, the distressed, and the needy, especially Sue, hospitalized and recovering after emergency surgery for a brain aneurysm, for Billy Free, who is hospitalized with an illness, Charlie, who will undergo heart procedures, Tom, recovering from an infection, Orva, recovering and in rehabilitation after being hospitalized, Tony, for healing after cancer treatments, Wally, recovering after breaking his hip, for all who are afflicted with COVID-19, including Sharon, Steve, and palliative care at home, for Deborah, for continued management of her illness, for Bernadette, Sue, Jennifer, Sharon, Joanne, Judy, William, Doris, Lloyd, Timothy, and Laura, all in treatment for cancer. For Miriam, Dorothy, and Frida in hospice care. Comfort all who mourn, especially the family of Richard Demi, who we remember today. Give your abiding comfort in every circumstance, that in Christ we shall not die, but live, and declare his works. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of glory, as you manifested yourself by the sign of Cana, transforming water into wine, so manifest yourself to share to us here, transforming bread and wine to be your very body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins and make us fit partakers in repentance. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that of your grace you have instituted holy matrimony in which you keep us from unchastity and other offenses. We implore you to send your blessing upon every husband and wife. Do not let them provoke one another to anger and strife, but let them live peacefully together in love and godliness. Strengthen them with your gracious help in all temptations. Help them to rear their children in accordance with your will. Grant us all to walk before you in purity and holiness, putting our trust in you and leading such lives on earth that in the world to come we may have everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly a good right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son, in him being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come and the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.